How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of Barrel Monk's up at this piece in the form of their Just to Prove a Point. This is a double India Pale Ale. Um, on the back here it says, you wouldn't um, guess a brewery specializing in Belgian styles would offer a canned double IPA for their anniversary beer. This pungent tropical ale was brewed and dry hopped with copious amounts of Idaho 7, Strata, and Mosaic, and like us, lives to defy your expectations. You chose wisely. Barrel Monks, Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, canned on 412. Today is 423. So you're talking about 11 days old. Uh, and it says on the bottom, it's science, uh, <laughs> which I love. 8.5%. Uh, um, this is their sixth anniversary, an unexpected way to celebrate our sixth anniversary. Barrel Monks. Uh, there you go. This comes courtesy of my boy Ralph from Barrel Monks. So Ralph was an OG. Massive beer review, beer mail, crazy man. And he loved beer so much, he became a brewer. And, uh, you know, he sends off these little jammers every now and then. Uh, he's the one who introduced me to Barrel Monks. Um, and he's the one who kind of, you know, it's not his brewery. Obviously, he's a brewer there, but he's influenced them a little bit to where these beers kind of make it out of the brewery, which I think is quite cool. Um, what does that look like? Old school double IPA, Midwest double IPA, two hearted style. Relatively clear, nothing overtly hazy. Um, you got a pinky finger, maybe three quarters of a pinky finger of tight, compact head. It looks the part of an old school kind of double. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Rich, almost not copper, but it's almost to that level of copper. Label wise, it's all over the place. Man. There's crazy shit going on all over this thing, so I don't know if I like it or not. Oh, this is Alfred E. Newman from Mad Magazine. I uh, we were I was actually talking about him today, which is really weird that it popped up in a can. It kind of looks like Saved by the Bell had uh, had a party with like um, a trapper keeper. Um, uh, trap, you don't even know what trapper keepers are, do you? Have most people out there, and then kind of like um, barfed it all up in a, in a label. So anyway, yeah, let's get nose. Super tropical. Super tro tropical, fruit juicy, but almost like a crystallized. It's not necessarily all the way to like hard sugar level sweetness, but there's this kind of sharp sweetness to it. This big tropical fruit component. It is tropical fruit on tropical fruit. To the point where I can't even get past it. It's like almost like a hard tropical fruit candy. You know, if you made juicy fruit gum, like took that flavor profile and then made it into a hard candy. It's like that when it comes off the tropical fruit. There's nothing as far as like a big, huge grain profile. There's nothing as far as a big, huge bittering. It is just a sweet, juicy double IPA. Let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah, old school thrown through. There is a decent bitterness. Oh, I shouldn't say decent. There is a bitterness in there. It comes through and it's welcome because even though the beer is sweet, but not overly sweet, it's way less sweet than you thought it would be based off of the nose. You'd need that kind of old school kind of prickly, a little bit of resinous, slightly kind of bitterness going on in there. Definitely has something outside of your normal London Conan 3 kind of um, yeast going on. There's a little bit of bubble gum floating around in there. So it's probably a little bit of Belgian yeast, maybe in combination or a little hybrid kind of yeast going on. It's actually pulling off this really cool trick. Where it doesn't look like it's got a really soft, creamy mouthfeel, but it does. You know, you usually look at beers like that, you expect, especially when I talk about it being like a hard candy kind of sweetness and stuff like that, you expect this kind of sharper, more thin slash cleaner, kind of crisper kind of drink. And while it's not a hefty, turbid kind of beer, it does have this really sneaky kind of softness to it. I really like this, dude. I like this quite a bit better than the other one you sent off. The other one was like a... It wasn't a bad beer by any stretch. It just was a little bit herky-jerky. And it, it, let's put it this way. The other one felt like it was trying to be an IPA. Just wasn't quite sure what it wanted to be. This one's a little bit more kind of confident. A little bit more purposeful what it wants to be. Because it's not a new school hazy IPA. I think the other one was leaning in a little bit like, let's do a Belgian beer, but do a little bit of kind of hazy IPA vibes. It is like, okay, let's make a really good double IPA with what we know how and what we want to do beer-wise. And that's where this kind of comes off. Because there is this kind of soft Belgian yeast to it. I say Belgian because there's a banana thing in there. And that just, I think Belgium, especially when you deal with uh, barrel monks. 
So it does have a soft kind of almost like triple kind of vibe to it. Like it's almost like you started off with like a triple recipe, but then dialed it this way and tweaked it a little bit this way and then moved it a little bit this way in order to kind of work uh, for this beer. The hot portion of the show here, I think is really fun. Again, it's not trying to be a super turbid, juicy citrus bomb over here. It's more of a tropical fruitiness. Um, it's mirroring really, really well with the way that kind of beer comes off in that, I don't want to keep saying Belgian triple, but that's the best way I can explain it, kind of malt base and how it's playing over there. But then you have that soft kind of creaminess to it, that little bit of soft mouthfeel that you come to expect with a lot of like unfiltered kind of Belgian beers. This is a really fun beer. Like, genuinely really fun. I like this. I like this a lot, actually. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's a fun beer. Dangerous, 8.5%. Probably, it drinks, it, eh, it drinks like the low sevens, so it's close. I can see myself getting in trouble on this one. I mean, it's just, it's, it tastes, how do I put it? The, and I, not that I want to keep hearkening back to the previous beer. The other beer tasted like Barrel of Monks trying to make a hazy IPA with the ingredients they have on hand. This tastes like Barrel of Monks going, set, I want to make a double IPA. Let's do it. That's that's the difference for me. And I think that's a smart choice. You know what I mean? Because, you know, a lot of hazy IPAs, hazy double IPAs, and again, this is not trying to be that. Look at it. Obviously, it's try, trying to be that. But, you know, a lot of people try to do that and try to kind of get in on that kind of game and try to duplicate and, and facsimile and and kind of mimic and all the words that are mean the same. I could just use different ones. Um, it's always nicer, I think, to brew from your soul. That's where this one kind of comes from me. And not to make it a little bit of kind of whatever esoteric or whatever the word you want to use, a little bit romantic. Um, but this tastes like... This tastes like a double IPA that Barrel Monks made. And I think that's a very, very... At least I mean it as a very, very high compliment. Whether Barrel Monks takes it that way, it is what it is. But I think this is really fun stuff. Is the typical wait in line, haze bro, kind of hop thotty, kind of like I just want the juice on the juice with the no bittering drink this and go this is fucking delicious and trade for this um i don't know you know i don't know but if you get somebody that likes beer more specifically belgian beer um and, and craft beer and when i say craft beer i mean like oh like og and semi og craft beer i'm talking about you know your you know your sierra nevadas your um your um bells your north coasts those kind of breweries um, grew up with those kind of breweries, but also appreciates new school IPA, more specifically the old school, new school, you know, you're talking about your headies, your fiddles, um, you know, those kind of sip of sunshine, your Lawson's, that kind of thing. This is kind of the beer they got. I think those people drink and go, man, it's really fucking gunned. You know, if all you live for is just tur turbid haze and pastry stout, not there's anything wrong with those beers. I do enjoy them. A certain sect of beer people, that's really what they enjoy and only what they enjoy. They might not go gaga for this, but I think a lot of people will. Oh, let me rephrase that. I think a lot of people should. You know, it's tasty. It's fun beer. I like it. That's a fun beer. Let's talk about it. This is one of the better double IPAs I've had. Ads of like, yes. Is it Mount Rushmore status? No. Um, if I put it in interesting beer, it probably goes a little bit higher because. It is unique, you know. It is taking the best parts of a Belgian strong pale ale, um, you know, almost like hints at like um, you know a uh, 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 words, man, or words beers. I can't even think about what. <sighs> Stilly knocked. Like I'm getting like a little bit of Stilly knocked vibes off of this. I couldn't think of the beer. As far as it's like not in spirit, not in like duplication so if you take some of the best kind of belgian strongs you know you're still knocked at a beer some of the ore beers out there and you marry them with some of those og run you know he, you know um alchemist kind of beers obviously lacking that huge weed component there but again the fiddleheads of the world those kind of beers it's kind of an amalgamation of both of those and i think that's a cool place to land because i don't know a lot of people who do that so 
you know, when I go through this, saying it's one of the better ones, yes. Uh, value availability, no idea. I think I, I want to say this is sixteen bucks. That just I mean, I know Ralph told me. I just forget. Um, brewery only, I assume, and leave you with if you like what we like this. That's where I want to bring that conversation to. If you can get down with old school Alchemist, old school Fiddlehead, old school Lawson's, but you also get down with you know um, the Dole uh, or beer. Do you know what I mean? Those kind of beers, and you want something that finds itself in between both of those worlds. That's this beer, and that you don't see all that often, and I think that's a great thing. So there you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massif if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying some unique beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>